Hello again, this is Laura with a brand new interactive card tutorial that I hope you'll enjoy. As you can see, when we rotate the wheel, the cute little space shuttle orbits around Earth. To give you some options, I made two prototypes with a slight difference. On the one to the left, I used a brad, but I adhered the prongs to the back of the panel with some tape, because we don't want the brad to rotate. For the other version, I used a spin and slide disc. Each version has its pros and cons. If you choose to use a spin and slide disc, you will need to enlarge the center hole of the wheel to exactly 3 16 of an inch. This could be problematic, but I found a perfect little die in the carpool dynamics. On the other hand, if you choose this version, you don't need to punch a hole in your card base. Both versions will work exactly the same. However, there is another little problem. The space shuttle from the Best Friends in the Universe stamp set is too large for this card. I didn't notice until I had finished coloring it. You could choose another stamp, like a small moon, or you can do what I did. Stamp the space shuttle on a piece of shrink plastic with stays on ink, color it with pencils and blast it with your heat gun to make it shrink. My kids love to play with this stuff and I had some in my stash, so I used both a frosty clear plastic as well as white. And to keep the space shuttle from moving too much while blasting it with your heat gun, you can put it inside of a deep little bowl or something. And once it stops shrinking, you need to flatten it with an acrylic block or something heavy like a book. I liked the white version better and decided to color the edges with a black Copic marker to give it a more polished look and so that it would blend better with the background. I also added a reflection to the window, or I think it's called viewing port, with a white sharpie. Here are the rest of the elements from the Best Friends in the Universe set that I stamped, colored and die cut off camera. I thought that the Earth globe would look cute with a face and used this die from the Straight Up Rainbow Dynamics and some pink and black cardstock backed with stick it adhesive to make it happen. It's a good idea to rub it with a bone folder so that it adheres perfectly. Okay, let's move on to the panel. Next you need to figure out where to place the peekaboo wheel. I'm using a blue disc so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Off camera I drew a little cross with a white gel pen and now I'm trying to center a one inch circle die and die cut a hole in the panel. Let me tell you a little more about it. I used the largest die from the A2 stitch rectangle stack set 1 dynamics to die cut it out of black cardstock. Then I spritzed it with green and pink mica spray and splattered drops of diluted white acrylic paint on it to create a space background. While I was die cutting off camera, I used the same die to cut that semicircular notch to the right. And here I'm centering my actual disc, the black one, behind the hole and then adding some tape to keep it in place so that I can mark my card base with a pencil and stamp a little arrow on it. I love that the words and symbols in the interactive label stamp set are so tiny because they fit even in the smallest of spaces. In the beginning, I mentioned that you need to make this hole bigger if you want to substitute the brad for a spin and slide disc. Just center the tiny circle die as well as possible and run it through your machine with a piece of tape to hold it in place. And once more, you need to line up the wheel with the card panel and center those holes perfectly. Next, use some tape to temporarily adhere the panel to the card base. Now you can add some strong double-sided tape to the spin and slide disc to adhere it to the card base. I like to file and roughen up the smooth surface first to make sure that it sticks. Then I just trim the tape with my scissors, get rid of the release paper and stick the disc in its place. There we go. Now let's use an eraser to get rid of the pencil marks before the next step, which is totally optional. 
If you give this card to a kid or someone with short nails, they might have a hard time rotating the disc, unless you cut a semicircular notch in your card base as well. Another option is to slightly elevate the disc by adding a layer or two to the back of it. I'm taking advantage of the blue disc from before, and you're not going to see this, so don't worry if it's not perfect. Okay, we're almost done. Now we just need to add foam tape to the back of our panel, avoiding the disc, of course. I'm using thin foam squares because I'm running out of my beloved scotch tape. So here I'm peeling off the release paper, and next I'm carefully adhering the panel to the card base. Now we can finally adhere a little strip of acetate to the exposed part of the wheel. I used a piece of thin foam square for this as well. I had a hard time centering the globe on the spin and slide disc, so I made a little template out of acetate with a slightly larger circle die. Have you noticed this card is all about centering elements? Now it's really easy to do. Okay, this looks perfect. Let's peel off the template and attach the space shuttle to the acetate strip. I didn't really measure it, but I'm guessing it's about three quarters of an inches long. We're almost done. Make sure that you adhere the planets in such a way that the space shuttle can move freely. I would have loved to add a little die-cut heart under it as a surprise element to be revealed but the shuttle kept snagging on it and I didn't feel like doing any heat embossing on my finished card. It was just way too risky. Isn't that the cutest little thing? I could play with this all day. Thank you so much for staying until the end. I hope you enjoyed today's card. And as always, you can find all of the information in the description box. But if you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Bye bye, until next time. Hasta la próxima.